Iowa State University, are you ready to present? Thanks, Charlotte. I My microphone went out there for a second, so. Oh, I, we can hear you now, everything's good. Yeah, sorry about that. And can you see my screen okay? Yep, looks great. Okay. Um, all right, everyone. Well, thank you. Um, sorry for the technical difficulties there. Um, my name is Dan Clark. I'm a regional admission counselor for Iowa State University. Um, Iowa State University is going to be a, a large public uh, land grant university. We have just under 31,000, um, our total enrollment is just under 31,000 students. Um, of those 31,000 students, about 26,000 are going to be undergraduate students. Um, we are located in the great college town of Ames, Iowa, right in the heart of the Midwest. Students that are coming from further away may, may find themselves flying into the Des Moines International Airport, which is about a 45-minute um, drive from, from campus, so a pretty accessible um, campus for students to um, get home and, and come back um, after those those breaks are over with. Um, we're also surrounded by some some major cities. So um, when students are looking maybe for some internship opportunities or full time jobs or or those co ops um, at some point during their their Iowa State career, um, they may find those um, And a lot of employers um, come to seek our students from from some of those major cities as well as from Iowa and and beyond. Uh, the U Iowa State University is going to be made up of six different undergraduate colleges. Um, our largest college at Iowa State is going to be our College of Engineering, and um, our most popular major is going to be Mechanical Engineering, followed by Computer and Electrical Engineering, and then Aerospace Engineering is in that top five as well as Kinesiology and Health. Um, the smallest college at Iowa State on the flip side of, of that is going to be our College of Design. Um, and we have some really great design programs, including our professional architecture program, um, interior design, um, landscape architecture as well. There's a number of ways for students to kind of find their fit at Iowa State or kind of find that home away from home and find their, their group of people. Um, and that may be by just getting involved on campus in a variety of, of ways that are um, uh, available to students. So that may be joining one of our 800 plus different student clubs or organizations, maybe holding a leadership position on campus, um, getting involved with campus recreation and our intramural activities and club sports. We also have some really great learning communities of which about 90% of um, our new first year students participate in at least one learning community. Um, that, that first year at Iowa State, a great way to kind of kind of build, build community and um, again, kind of find that fit right when they step foot on campus. Um, students also have the opportunity to study abroad through a number of different opportunities. Our programs are on all continents and kind of vary in terms of, of the different lengths that are, that are offered for those. As far as admission to Iowa State University goes, um, these are gonna be our, our minimum high school core course requirements. So pretty, pretty standard there. Um, to determine admissibility to Iowa State, we do have a rolling admission process. So as we receive applications, we're reviewing those applications and getting students their admission decision pretty quickly. Um, how we determine admission is we have a, our region admission index score. So we'll plug a student's GPA test score and the number of years of their core high school courses into this formula. Um, and if they have a 245 score or higher, they're automatically admitted to Iowa State as long as they meet those minimum high school core course requirements as well. Uh, we are test optional. So if students choose not to report a test score or don't have a test score to report, um, we'll just factor in that, that high school GPA and the number of years of core high school courses. Um, and then for California students, we have some really um, great um, opportunities for merit scholarships. Um, we have our quest award starting at $7,000 per year, and then um, that requires a 3.0 um, GPA. And then we go up to the next two levels, our journey and adventure level. 
with those, we'll look at a combination of a student's GPA and test score, or the combination of their GPA and their core course count. Whichever combination puts them in that, that higher category, we would, we would use that. And then in addition to those, those three levels, we also have our bonus exploration award. So if a student meets that 3.0 GPA requirement, they could um, stack on top of that an additional um, $3,000 per, per year with that exploration award. So with that, I'll, um, I'll pass it on to the next presenter, but thanks for um, taking the time to join us tonight. And if you have any questions, I'll, I'll throw my information in the chat as well to follow up with. Thank you so much for starting us off, Iowa State University. Next will be Case Western Reserve University. Good evening, everyone. My name is Rayanne DiVaggio, and I am one of the admission staff. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Undergraduate Admission at Case Western Reserve University. Um, we are a comprehensive, research-intensive, medium-sized urban institution located in Cleveland, Ohio. We have about 10,000 students total, and of those, about 6,200 or so are undergraduates. Um, we have... Um, a number of programs in um, about 100 different majors that we offer. We have a single door admission to the university, so our students are able to choose from programs in the arts and engineering, humanities, management, natural sciences, nursing, um, and social sciences. Many of our students, because we admit to the university, are um, uh, choosing to study more than one program. So we have a lot of students who will double major or they will major and minor in multiple areas. Um, and because we have that single door admission, it's very easy for our students to be able to pursue uh, programs of study that are best suited for what their areas of interests may be. We also believe that participating in activities related to programs of study outside of the classroom, those experiential learning opportunities are an important part of a student's educational journey at the university as well. So about 99% of our students will choose to participate in some kind of experiential learning opportunity. It could be a service learning experience. It could be research as a tier one research school. Um, our students are engaged in undergraduate research from as early as their first year on campus to any time throughout their, their four years. Um, our nurses are starting in their clinical rotations about three weeks into their freshman year. So immediately starting in the hospital settings. So they're getting that hands-on experience. Um, our business students are, uh, are able to take advantage of entrepreneurship opportunities um, in the form of um, partnerships that we offer with a number of um, nonprofits, startups, and Fortune 500 companies throughout the country. Um, our engineer and science students can participate in co-op experiences. Those are an opportunity for you to work 40 hours a week, um, take a semester, one as a junior, one as a senior, to get some of that hands-on experience and a full-time work experience. Many of our students will choose to participate in internships. Again, that hands-on experience, but not quite as formal as a 40 hour a week full-time job. Um, and about 40% of our students will also choose to pursue some kind of international study um, as part of their experience at Case Western Reserve. We also have a very intensive support system in place for our students. Every student at the university will start out with a first year advisor because technically all of our students arrive on campus as undecided students. Once you choose your major or your multiple programs of study, your advisor is going to change and become a faculty member from your, your chosen field. So you have the opportunity to meet with an individual faculty advisor for each program that you may be choosing to study. They're going to be a great mentor, a great resource for you, helping you through that experience. Our residential community is a very vibrant living and learning community. So we have community directors who are serving as additional support services and resources for our students. 
Every student at the university is also um, assigned a library advisor, so someone who is um, available to help you as a in as a research librarian um, as you are navigating through your academics. Um, and then we have navigators, and they are exactly as the title implies. They are an assigned person uh, at campus for each student who is helping you navigate through the experience, whether it's academic, social, extracurricular, any kind of, of opportunities that you may have questions about, your navigator is available to help walk through those. Another exciting opportunity that we have at Case Western Reserve is Thinkbox. We are very um, fortunate to have about 50,000 square feet of makerspace at the university. We provide a number of tools, technology, and expertise with our staff who are working in Thinkbox. It's open to every student at the university. Some programs will require you to spend some time in Thinkbox, but many of our students are spending a lot of time there taking um, concepts and ideas all the way through to a finished product as part of that. Um, we're very proud that, that Thinkbox is the largest open access makerspace on a, any college or university campus in the nation. Our students are also engaged outside of the classroom in a variety of areas from athletics to culture to community service to, to Greek life um, and the performing arts. I mentioned that we are located in Cleveland. Um, we have a variety of opportunities for our students to take advantage of there. The neighborhood where we are is a very culturally rich area. You can see some of our um, neighbors include the Cleveland Museum of Art, the Natural History Museum, Western Reserve Historical Society, um, and Severance Hall, which is home to the Cleveland Orchestra. Six months after graduation, our students are gainfully employed. They are, are are in graduate or professional schools, they are very successful beyond the classroom as well. And finally, sharing our um, decision plan opportunities for our students as well. Thank you, Case Western Reserve University. Next to present is Loyola Marymount University. All right, here we go. Good evening, Midi Monarchs. <laughs> uh, a lot of you probably already have at least some familiarity with LMU. Uh, it's highly likely that you have friends or even siblings um, just down I-5 in Los Angeles um, on our beautiful campus, but I'm glad I can tell you all a little bit more about LMU this evening. So LMU is a private Catholic Jesuit University located in Los Angeles, of course. Uh, that's a picture of a, an aerial view of our campus atop a beautiful bluff, and I'll talk a little bit more about our location, but LMU is a medium-sized, nationally recognized research institution, uh, and so I'll try to talk a little bit more about each of those things as well, um, but I am going to start with our Jesuit tradition. So uh, the Jesuits, <clears throat> of course, are a type or an order um, of Catholic priests. They are a founding order. Um, I've also got one of my Jesuit buddies, Gonzaga, in the room with us here this evening. So uh, she might even say some things that sound familiar as well. If you're looking at other uh, Jesuit institutions, we have a, a beautiful shared uh, mission and just approach to um, education. The LMU mission, um, which is pretty consistent with the mission um, of any Jesuit institution. Um, these are some of the tenets of our mission statement, but really what a Jesuit education is all about is um, challenging our students, grounding our students in the liberal arts with a broad and thoughtful core curriculum, challenging each of our students to learn how to think critically about the needs and problems in the world around them, uh, learning how to communicate clearly, how to have conversations, debates, um, how to think critically about big issues. And we want each of our students to think of their education in terms of what they have to give back to the world around them. So it's a nice lofty uh, kind of philosophical ideal, but it's something that I think the Jesuits are also very practical. And those of us who work at Jesuit institutions about helping our students find ways to realize uh, those important parts of our mission. 
This map is not to scale, but kind of gives you an idea of our um, location on the west side of Los Angeles. Um, if you were to fly into LAX from, say, San Jose, you would be about five minutes from campus at the um, LAX International Airport. And we're just a couple miles from the beach. So it's a very suburban, residential, um, self-contained campus. More than half of our students live on campus, so it really feels like home, but with the big city right nearby. Um, as I said, we're medium sized. So, um, you know, if you come to campus, and I hope you get a chance to do that during your college search, I think you'll see um, the wonderful warm sense of community on campus. You'll hear our students talk about how accessible their professors are. Um, a lot of times students, uh, you know, when they come to visit or in sessions like this, ask about internships, research opportunities, things like that. Um, and yes, yes, yes to all of it. <laughs> Many of our programs, like for example, in the College of Business are going to require students to do at least one internship. Um, many students in like science or engineering fields are very interested in research opportunities. And we are a research to institution and we are primarily undergraduate. So um, our faculty do a high level of research and they really rely on undergraduates as their research assistants. So more than you know, students even having to go and seek out those opportunities, I hear stories all the time of professors who seek a student out, even a freshman or a sophomore student um, looking for their help um, because they notice the students' qualifications, their interests, their passions, and they know that that student could be a good research assistant for them or help them write a paper or things like that. So there are a lot of really organic ways that those opportunities take place as well. This is a quick uh, glimpse at something that I could spend 20 minutes on, but obviously won't. Um, I just like to kind of reiterate the um, kind of interesting, um, integrative, interdisciplinary nature of our core curriculum. Um, a Jesuit education really challenges our students to learn how to think. And um, our core curriculum reinforces that in every um, aspect and every part of that curriculum. And then there's just kind of a glimpse of our um, different undergraduate schools and colleges on the right hand side here. So, um, you know, film and television obviously being one of the most um, unique, but also one of the smaller academic areas. Um, the only one not listed here, of course, is the School of Education um, because it is primarily graduate programs, but you can become a certified teacher um, during your undergraduate years as well. Um, real briefly about the student experience, uh, I like to say there is no one way to be an LMU lion. <laughs> and I think our students would agree there are just such a plethora of opportunities. We have Division I athletics, we've got a Greek system. Um, something kind of unique to LMU is um, our service organizations that a lot of students choose to be involved with. Uh, we have uh, hundreds of different clubs, lots of intramural sports, club sports. Um, a lot of um, cultural and affinity and other type of groups, um, honor societies, just you name it, we've got it. But what I hear, what I love is that there's such a variety of things that students can be involved with. But what I hear our students saying, like when they're giving to advice, giving advice to incoming freshmen, they'll say, get involved, get involved. Um, but it's truly open-ended advice. I don't ever hear a student saying, oh, if you want to have a social life, you have to do this. Or if you want to do well and, you know, academically, you have to do that. Um, there truly is no one way um, to belong and be a part of the community at LMU. There's a very wide variety of opportunities. Um, I thought my timer was reliable, but I see my little 30-second uh, warning there. So um, if you want more information about any of these things, just suffice it to say that we have a, a broad variety of different um, levels of support for our students um, in order to help them be successful. Um, and this is something I'll pop into the chat um, just in the interest of time. In terms of the application process, um, we are still test optional in admission and our early action deadline is coming up November 1. So um, I'll put my contact information in the chat as well. If you have any um, additional questions, I'd be happy to hear from you. Thank you, Loyola Marymount University. Next will be Menlo College. Hi, everyone. Can you see my screen okay? Looks good. Perfect. Thank you all for coming to our um, session today. Um, I am one of the admissions counselors here at Menlo College. Um, Menlo College, of course, is located in the Bay Area, um, specifically in the city of Atherton. Um, we are a small private college. 
um, right in the middle of both San Francisco and San Jose, so super close to all of the students um, at Archbishop Mitty, um, about 30 miles, give or take, um, from like the San Jose and the San Francisco area. And this is just a little glimpse of some of the companies which are um, alumni and students um, have landed different internship uh, and career opportunities. And I'll talk a little bit more about our internship opportunities for our students here on campus. Menlo is composed of a little over a little over than 800 total students on our campus. So we are small but mighty. Um, we have students from all walks of life. The bulk of our students are coming from the state of California, but we have um, 25 of our other states represented on our campus um, and 27% of our students come from different international countries. Um, 88 um, countries represented on our campus, which is super exciting. Um, so huge um, numbers of diversity. We're ranked number 16th in the state of California for most diverse college campus. Our student to faculty ratio is 17 to one. So we have very, very small class um, classes here on our campus. Um, I would even bet to say that the biggest class you'll probably ever sit in um, will be no more than 25 total students. We've also had classes as small as four or 10, um, and our students really do love that the smaller classes and that one-on-one -on -one attention that they do get from our professors. Um, along with that, we do have over 40 different um, student-led organizations on our campus, and every year students are able to um, enroll or there is open enrollment for clubs, so they're able to um, create their own, their own clubs. So clubs change every year, just as the student interest changes every year. And we host a club fair on campus every semester for students to be able to sign up for the different clubs that they would like to be a part of as well. Uh, in terms of the different majors that we do offer on our campus, um, we do focus on two different um, areas of study. So business and psychology within business, you'll notice that we have a couple of different concentrations or areas of study such as accounting, business analytics, finance, um, marketing, sports management, and then under our general management, we have a couple of um, specializations and concentrations such as entrepreneurship, human resource management, international management, real estate, um, and then of course our psychology program. Um, our most popular majors here on campus are going to be um, sports management, marketing, and accounting. Um, however, none of our classes or majors are impacted here on our campus, so students don't necessarily need to declare a major um, in their application. Um, they do, however, need to declare a major at the end of their second year um, as students on our campus. We are, uh, we do have a couple of different sports on our campus. We have a total of 16 different collegiate level sports. We are part of the NAIA. Um, division one, which is equivalent to an NCAA division two school. Um, the only difference is that we are able to offer athletic scholarships for our students. So um, like I said, we do have 16 different collegiate level sports and two club sports on our campus. Um, if any student is interested in potentially doing any of our sports on campus, you're welcome to, of course, um, talk to us as admissions counselors or reach out to the coaches directly um, to make contact with them to see if they are going to be recruiting um, for that specific sport. Um, so all of our business students at Menlo College are required to do an internship. Um, an internship is not something that is sprung on students. So students do start working from their day one on our campus to get them ready um, for internships. Uh, so only one internship is required, but we have seen, of course, students doing internships um, across their entire academic careers here on our campus. We have over 500 different partnerships across the world. We never place students in an internship, but we do help them um, obviously land different internship opportunities. Um, our internship program, students are able to do an internship anywhere in the world that they want to. Um, we have of course seen that most students want to stick around in the Bay Area to do internships. Um, and we really do gear up our students for success. So they have different resume workshops, um, mock interview opportunities, um, career fairs that they um, that our career services hosts every spring semester. Um, so students are geared up for success um, in terms of landing potential internship opportunities. 
Um, we also have a really high employment rate um, in part due to our internships. So over 90% of our students are employed within six months of graduation. Um, and we are ranked um, by Zipia as number three in the state of California for um, job placements, um, which is really exciting for our students because like I said, we do really try to prep our students as early as possible for them to have internship opportunities. Um, and I'm, in an effort of time, I will go ahead um, and save a couple of the slides and include them um, more information in our chat. But we do have a couple of um, admission requirement deadlines. Um, our early action non-binding deadline is November, November 15th, and our regular decision deadline is February 1st. Um, only the only admissions requirements are an application and a transcript. And I'll include all of my information in the chat for you all. But thank you so much for having me today. Thank you, Menlo College. Before our next presentation, I want to remind everyone to use that Q&A button to make this session uh, interactive. Next will be Gonzaga University. Awesome, glad to be here with you guys. Let me share my screen. Perfect, I think you guys can all see that okay. Um, but hi, welcome. Um, glad to have you guys here. Feel free to drop questions in the chat and I'll be checking it out um, a little bit after my presentation. But yeah, my name is Becky Doyle. I'm an admission counselor here at Gonzaga University up in Spokane, Washington. Uh, and I'm actually an alumni, uh, just graduated. So this past May, so right out of college. So I can tell you a little bit about admissions, but also an insight onto what student life is like on campus because I was just a part of it. Um, so first off, a little intro. So Gonzaga is a mid-sized university, so it's about 5,000 undergraduate students, and we're a pri private liberal arts Catholic um, Catholic university, as well as we're formed on the we're formed on Jesuit ideals. And basically, what that means is when we have our students um, on campus, we want to make sure that they're getting a really holistic student development, um, and that involves both education, extracurriculars. Um, as well as being a part of the Spokane community. Um, and which is really huge because we take what we're learning in the classroom and we wanna make sure that we're applying it once we get out uh, of college and um, into the greater Spokane community. But we're a top 21% ranked university and we're really geared towards building students um, that are well-rounded and go forward to live lives of good leadership and service um, toward the common good in our communities, so. And with that, um, to help in those efforts, we have 75 different academic programs um, across five different colleges. Um, so the first of that is gonna be our College of Arts and Sciences. So that's gonna be where our core classes are, but we have anything from broadcasting, psychology, biology, um, biochemistry, but a whole different range. And that's probably our largest college on campus. Um, so if you're really looking into great creating a more holistic education that's definitely the college for you um, and we have really cool programs where we involve research opportunities on campus um, as well so moving forward the school of business administration um, that's my alma mater um, i was a business major myself and it's an amazing program where we have both an accounting and a business administration major with over 11 different concentrations and they're always adding more um, so i was a marketing major but we got finance, business analytics, um, and just really a broad range so that you're learning the basics of your business degree, but also getting that specialization in your later years. And moving forward, we also have our School of Education, which is great because you're moving into the Spokane community, starting your first year on campus, and you're actually getting to work with students, whether it's preschool, kindergarten, uh, elementary, middle school. Um, so great. And then what one of our programs that we're known the most for is our School of Engineering. So we have five different concentrations, are, but our most popular is particularly the Mechanical Engineering. Um, and it's a great program where you have a senior design project. Um, so you get a little bit of hands-on experience before you graduate, as well as we have people go on to engineering at Boeing, um, and a lot of other um, great companies. So, so one that we're super proud of. Um, and then also we have our School of Nursing and Human Physiology. So our nursing program is um, ranked, around, ranked around the state of Washington, as well as we had 100% NCLEX pa pass rate, which is the test you need to take to become an RN post-graduation. Um, so a really great program there as well. 
And so moving forward, so we do have those 5,000 undergraduate students, um, but we're a very diverse ca campus. So we're Catholic, but we do have those 32 different faiths on campus, as well as our average class size is going to be 23 students. So when I was on campus, I didn't have a class with more than 35 students. So it's a really great way to get really one on one attention with each of your professors. And it's not a commuter campus. So we have 82% of our students coming from over 200 miles away, um, as well as our most popular program is going to be our study abroad programs um, with places anywhere from Florence to Madrid, lots of opportunities there. But one of our biggest things on campus that we have is our 140 plus clubs and organizations, which we really encourage each of our students to become a leader um, on campus um, and just making sure that they're dedicating their time to stuff that they care about and they're passionate about so that they feel confident um, leading their lives outside of college. And we also have over 43,000 hours of community service annually by our students. So we wanna make sure that they're taking their gifts and bringing them out into the Spokane community, whether that's through um, student teaching, um, I, internships with nonprofits in the area, all there which is great. And over on your right, just for the sake of time, we have excellent resources for you on campus, including a really robust health and counseling, Lincoln LGBTQ Resource Center, as well as the UMEC, which is the Unity Multicultural Education Center on campus, just making sure that our students are welcomed and they're also supported on our campus. Um, but we're top 15 in the nation for undergraduate teaching, which is huge considering the size of our universe, or the size of our university. And it's because our professors really care about getting to know each of their students. We like to say that you're not a number, you're a name um, in our book, which is really great. And just moving forward a little bit, just want to make sure I get this in under time. Um, so we do have an admission deadline. So we like to keep it really simple, just December 1st um, for one application, no early action, no early decision. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, please reach out to me um, and I'll drop my information in the chat and I'd love to see you here on campus. Thank you. Thanks so much, Gonzaga University. Next to present is Trinity College. Yes, hello everyone. Thank you for sticking with it. I know that these strives can fairs can get a little long, especially towards the end, but I'm just going to really briefly tell you a little bit about Trinity College in Hartford, Connecticut and what we're all about. So to begin with, I just want to orient y'all a little bit to just some quick facts about Trinity. So we're a small, primarily undergraduate liberal arts and sciences college. And we have about 2,100 full-time undergraduate students and like 60 graduate students. So that's why when I say primarily undergraduate, I really mean it. Our students come from 48 states across the US and actually this slide needs to be updated. We just completed census a few weeks ago and we now have 85 countries represented on campus from our 13% of our population that are international students. We also have about 23% who are domestic students of color from within the US and 90% of our students live on campus. So it's a very residential experience and a very residential college, even within the city of Hartford. On top of that, we also have about 60% of students who receive financial aid. That's through our policy of meeting 100% of demonstrated need for all admitted students. And you have questions about that, I will drop my email in the chat later and you can absolutely email me about it. I do wanna just quickly orient y'all on where Hartford is because we're pretty far away from California. So Hartford is the capital of Connecticut basically equidistant between New York and Boston. You can hop in the car, drive two hours one direction, and you'll be in Manhattan, two hours the other way, and you're in downtown Boston. So it's a really nice, well-located city while also being a really sizable mid-sized city of about a million people. We have Bradley International Airport. That's about a 20-minute drive from campus, so really accessible getting to and from the school as well. In terms of our academic experience, like I mentioned, we are a liberal arts and sciences college. So 
During your time at Trinity, we're going to ask you to step outside of your comfort zone through our different distribution requirements, but we don't want you to take a course that you're really going to hate. So we basically say you have to do a natural science or a humanities or a social science course during your four years here. And it's up to you to find one of those courses within, you know, all of the 900 plus courses we offer that really excites you. And so most of our students find they really don't have to go out of their way to fill those requirements because there's at least one class somewhere within, say, the social sciences, if you're more of a STEM heavy person, that they're really excited about and want to take. Two really important factors in our curriculum are actually brand new as of last year, and that's our wellness and co-curricular requirements. So co-curricular means anything outside of the classroom, be it research, teaching assistantships, internships, all of that. We require that students have three co-curricular experiences in order to graduate. Now, these experiences aren't new to Trinity. While they were just added into the curriculum, we had an 85% rate of students doing internships before they graduated already. So we're just thinking that this will, you know, give students a little extra nudge out the door or, you know, really round out students' internship or research experience by requiring them to do three. We're really excited to see how the new classes take this requirement. And so far we have not heard any complaints, which is really exciting about the new curriculum. And then the other factor in it is also wellness. So you have to do, you know, four wellness experiences during your time at Trinity. This can be anything from club sports to, you know, journaling or meditation courses to CPR courses, personal finance courses. It's a very broad term. And again, we do ask you to not do like four of the exact same thing, but it's really up to you to determine what wellness is going to look like for you during your time at Trinity. Um, like I said, co-curricular experiences are a big part of your time at Trinity. And that's because at the end of the day, Hartford is probably the most unique factor about Trinity College and really something that brings students to Trinity. So like I said, Hartford is the capital of Connecticut, a city of about a million people in the metro area. And during their time at Trinity, students really do engage with the city. We have over 200 pre-established internships in the Hartford area, and those can both be like part-time as well as full-time programs like our Health Fellows Program for any of my pre-health students in the audience or the Legislative Internship Program, which is really great for students interested in maybe like public policy and law or political science. But there really is something for everyone within the Hartford area. And on top of internships, we also have a lot of community engagement through the Center for Hartford Engagement and Research or SHARE. SHARE does a ton of different things within our student body and they really help students get connected with Hartford through things like the Trinco Cafe, which is our internet cafe. There's community learning courses where the coursework involves a significant portion of engagement with the community. There's also, um, you know, like civic engagement, volunteering in Hartford, and then programs like our Liberal Arts Action Lab, where students actually spend a semester working to solve a problem that has been raised by a member of the Hartford community. So um, I know a student who last year was in the Liberal Arts Action Lab working on issues of affordable housing, and it was her job to research different ways that alternative modes of funding could be found to support alternative housing or um, affordable housing in Hartford. And so she really enjoyed that experience. She is a human rights and economics major. So it was really a way for her to, you know, think about how her um, degrees would be used in the field as well. And so it's something that our students really value too. If you have any questions or want to contact me, there's my email. I will also put it in the chat, but that was a very quick overview of Trinity and I'll turn it back to Charlotte now. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, Trinity College. At this time, I'd like to invite all of the presenters to turn your cameras back on for a little bit of Q&A. The first question is, what advice would you give to someone who's going through the college search process? Iowa State University? Yeah, thanks, Charlotte. Um, I think just to keep it simple, and maybe it may sound obvious, but um, just identify and use your resources as best as possible, whether those are like your high school counselors, family, or us as admissions counselors, um, feel free to reach out and, and connect with, with those resources. Great, Case Western Reserve University. Sure, I, um, I think it's important for uh, students, for you to remember that this is a process and that you 
should be the driving factor in the process. So be sure to utilize all your resources and um, you know use those outside opportunities, but you should be the person who is taking charge of this. Um, it is a, a process, so it is step by step. And if you remember to kind of take it in smaller steps, I think you'll find that it, it will be um, a much easier process for you to manage and maneuver your way through. Loyola Marymount University, what advice would you give to someone going through the college search process? So it is a process is one of my favorite pieces of advice, but I'll add to that and kind of elaborate and just say um, my other favorite piece of advice is do you, you do you in the application process. And it is a process and you are going to start with a long list and you're going to get in some places and not others if you've done your list well. Uh, and then you're going to have a decision to make, but all through that process, especially when you're working on your applications, um, there's really no right or wrong way to do a college application. Be yourself. If you have done lots of service, that's great. If you've spent a lot of time working, that's great. If you've done a sport, that's great. Um, whatever your experience has been, that's what we want to learn more about through the application process. And um, hopefully it'll be a mutual discernment um, where you and the college or colleges that you're considering um, are able to figure out whether you're a fit. Um, but you're going to fit some places and not others, and that's okay. Um, do you? And you'll end up hopefully where you need to be. Menlo College, what advice would you give? Um, I would have to say I definitely agree with everyone. Um, it is a process. Um, try not to get too boggled down. I think, you know, sometimes long lists can be overwhelming. Um, but try and tackle one thing at a time. Give yourself, you know, 30 minutes a day to work on something college related. Um, be you. Um, definitely, you know, you are your own unique person. So um, tell us how, you know, what makes you so unique. Um, and we love to read, um, obviously, what makes you unique. Um, and we love to get to know all of the students, of course, as well. So reach out to your resources. Don't be afraid to ask for help, whether it be to your high school counselors or admissions counselors at the different universities you're considering. Um, we're here to help as much as we can. Gonzaga University, what advice would you give? Yeah. Um kind of seconding everyone else, but don't write what you think we want to hear. Don't write what you think we want to hear. Just truly write how you feel about things and obviously be yourself, be genuine because that's what people are looking for because um, they want to see if you're a fit for the university and they don't want you to go to a school where you're not going to um, like and fit in. Um, but definitely just be genuine, I would say, and find something you're passionate about and have that come across in your application as well. And Trinity College. This is maybe more for, I think, the end of the process, but when it comes down to like making that final decision, trust your gut. Know that you, college is what you make of it and whatever school you think that you are going to like be the most successful at, trust yourself in that moment and know that you're going to make your college experience fantastic. And what is one thing you want students to remember about your school? Iowa State University. Oh, you're on mute. So sorry. Um, I think at Iowa State University, um, students get a great classroom experience, but students also learn by doing at Iowa State and innovation and entrepreneurship and just collaboration amongst um, uh, the different six different undergraduate colleges and, and faculty um, are kind of at the forefront of what Iowa State's all about. Great. Case Western Reserve University, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? Sure. Um, we are a leading private research institution um, that offers more than 100 different programs of study, and we want our students to come in and, and kind of find that right path pathway that's going to work best for them, utilize those classroom resources, those experiential learning opportunities, take advantage of not only the learning community, but also the living community at the university, um, and, you know, take advantage of being in an urban in an urban environment, the opportunities that being in that kind of an environment can provide um, to help enhance that um, and also to um, work hard to find the best pathway that is going to fit 
your interests and your needs as a student at Case Western Reserve. Thank you, Loyola Marymount University. I love so many things about LMU, but my favorite thing uh, is that we are a Jesuit university. So if you had to remember one thing, I would say, please know that if you end up as a student at LMU, you will hopefully throughout your four years be both challenged and supported to become your best self and to think about what you're going to give back to the world around you. Menlo College, what's one thing you you want students to remember about your school? Uh, there's so many things, but I will say um, Menlo is such a unique place. Um, we really are small but mighty. Um, you really, students really are able to be big fish in a small pond here at our campus. Um, and really great opportunities, not just to be successful here on our campus, but um, outside of our campus in the Bay Area, in the Silicon Valley. I mean, it really is a great place to be surrounded by so many um, great opportunities. Gonzaga University. I think one thing to remember about Gonzaga University is yes, we have a fantastic basketball team and we do great in March Madness every year, but that's not the one thing that I think really makes our university stand out. I would say that the energy in the community is what makes all of those events so special because people on campus, they love to be there and they're always happy students around. So I would say it's definitely the energy you can feel on campus. Trinity College. Yeah, at the end of the day, just the benefits of having that small residential liberal arts and sciences college, but still in an urban setting with all of the resources of the city at your fingertips and with a city like Hartford, where Trinity truly has, you know, spent years and years building relationships, building close connections and where we know our students will really be able to thrive. Thank you so much for joining us for this session. When you close the window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions. You'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strifescan.com slash archbishop-midi. Thank you.